Hey guys, the name is Jasper, and welcome back to part 2, Analysis. In this video, we will talk about episode 81, which was released on January 23. Okay, let me tell It's focus, focus, okay, focus, okay, good. This is one of those, like... We can uh, we can say the filler episodes then. Kung tutuusin, I mean, filler kasi um, in the previous episode, alam na natin magpapalam si Clay at magpapalam si Clay kay, kay Fidel. Alam na natin yun. This episode is more of a, an extension to the previous episode. Yun lang yung masasabi ko. Pero, there are some new things that we discovered in this episode na wala in the previous episode. But you know what? Let's start. Let's start with this one muna. I can't think of any other way to properly close the um, close the friendship that Clay and Marie Clara has when it comes to farewells, this has been the perfect way of saying goodbye. Kasi nagpaalam sila na walang ano, walang atraso. Nagpaalam si Clay to not only Mana Clara, pero Tia Isabel insisted na she insisted na magpaalam din siya kay Clay mismo properly. I love the gesture that Tia Isabel did for Clay. Yung sinuklayan niya si Clay mismo. As if, numalabas na parang, yeah, Tia Isabel also cares for her. Tutusin, kung ano yung pagmamahal ni Tia Isabel kay Mana Clara, then parang ganun na rin kay Clay kasi sinuklayan niya mismo. I mean, who does that? Sinong gagawa nun? Susuklayan mo yung kaibigan ng, ng pamangkin mo? That's a big deal. Like, that's a big gesture coming from Tia Isabel herself. And that's what surprised me the most about, um, about this specific scene that they both shared. It's very heartwarming. And Tia Isabel has gone a long way since the first time we saw her. Na busy tayo kay Tia Isabel dahil lagi niya pinapagalitan si Clay. Ilang beses ang nabisit sa kanya. Sinab sinabi ko din ilang beses na Tia Isabel is probably the most hated character in Mara Clara Tibada right now. I'm pretty sure people posted their hate towards Tia Isabel um, in the past few months ago. But now we are at this point. Kung saan sinusuklan niya mismo si Clay. Ang kala ko yung binigyan ni Clay yung suklay. Parang na nakawi na ni Tia Isabel. Like, nope, you don't deserve that. Pero pumunta si Tia Isabel sa likod ni Clay at sinuklayan siya. Wow, that's a very motherly thing to do. I really love this scene. This is easy to like, sa top 10 scene ko of all time itong scene to. Not the scene between Mana Clara at Clay, but the scene between Clay and Tia Isabel. This is a good example of an amazing character development. We can say this is also a good conclusion to um, Tia Isabel's character redemption after all she did um, towards Clay. But again, it's understandable kung bakit bisit na bisit siya kay Clay, di ba? This is not a, this is not a shift of of a character change or something like that. Basta sabihin ng ibang mga tao, ay hindi ano, parang out of character si, si ano, si Tia Isabel. Matapos na tatawagan niyang babae, si Clay. Ganun, ganun. But when you think about it, when you think about it, the most important thing to Tia Isabel is yung kapakanan ni Mana Clara mismo. And the fact na Clay was with Mana Clara for better or worse, you can't deny the fact that Clay made Mana Clara happy. 
Clay is the jewel in all of this horrendous things na nangyayari sa San Diego. And Mana Clara is thankful for that jewel. She's very thankful for Clay. And Tia Isabel noticed that. Wow, what an amazing scene. Itong scene na to, nakapagpalam din si Clay sa mga nangasal sa kanya. Sa mga marites sa kanya. It doesn't have to be a grand gesture, pero a simple look ng ginawa itong tatlo na to. Tapos ang pagtingin ni Clay then, focus, focus, focus. Hello. Then that's more than enough. It's a small gesture, but it's 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 a really big one. Gaya na sabi ko in the past, the smallest actions can have the biggest meanings. And this is one of them. Um, an ama- a, simple, a simply amazing scene. Ang tanong, hope ang makikita pa ba sila Clay at Maria Clara in El Fulvusterismo? Gusto niyo bang makita yung ganong scene? Gusto niyo bang makita ulit sila? Kung ako itatanong, I would rather be, this scene na to, this would rather be the perfect scene kung saan makikita natin si Barbie Forteza and Julian Sanchez sharing the same scene together. This is perfect. Kasi I'm just afraid that the next time they'll meet, baka it's, it's a tragedy, di ba? I just hope na ito na yung proper closure that they needed. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now let's talk about Ibarra here. This is our first time seeing, um, seeing Ibarra. After many episodes na wala siya. I think last week's episode, um, hindi natin siya nakita fully, di ba? But this is different. This is entirely different, especially in this scene right here. This Ibarra is a very different Ibarra because I've been getting a different kind of vibe from him. It's not about his clothes, no. Dito tungo sa kanyang pananamit. But it's about how Dennis Trillo was able to perform this this wounded Ibarra. You know na may plano yung Ibarra na to. And you now know why the change into the Simone character makes sense. May plano siya na, ano, um, na ipag-paaral si Basilio. It now makes sense kung bakit si Kapitan Chagong nagalaga kay Basilio sa El Filibusterismo as it turns out, it was Ibarra's plan. I'm not sure if this is from the books, pero sa pagkakalong ko, parang wala naman yata. If this is an added scene, then I really appreciate this scene. Para walang biglaan na pagbabago next time na magkita natin si Ibarra bilang Simon. This scene right here is the start. Of Ibarra's revenge story. He wouldn't wait till 13 years to have the revenge. Just after getting imprisoned and just after life or death, of course, he will try to get some revenge immediately. And now we are already seeing the seeds of that. This might be Ibarra. Pero right now, there's more Simon into him than the Ibarra character himself. And as it turns out, idea pala na Ibarra to. Na pumunta si Basilio sa Manila at idea na Ibarra na magpakalayo muna para magpahinga at mag-ipon ng enerhiya. Wow. Wow. Um, napansin ko din sa performance ni Dennis Trillo na there was a change, there was a shift in his voice on how he was able to speak his lines sa, sa scene na to. Parang lagi nag-out of focus to. 
the way he was able to speak those lines clearly is a testament to how amazing of a performer Dennis Trillo is. It's very subtle. It's very subtle, but you can see at pinag-usapan ng director pati ni Dennis Trillo na, okay, Dennis, at this point in time, you're within the borders of Ibarra and Simon. I want you to perform this scene that distinguishes the Ibarra from this scene to the Ibarra that we know from the previous episodes. And that that's what he was able to do. Napapansin ko na na meron siyang stubble. Is stubble sa mga bigote. Tumutubo rin kanyang bigote. And again, this is this is the transformation to the Simone character that, you know, that we are that we've been already seeing since tinutok niya yung kuchilyo na yun kay Padre Damaso in a previous episode. Simply amazing, simply amazing. Even the even the costume change. Within the context of this scene right here, suddenly naging ka-level na ni Ibarra yung KKK group dito ni na Lucia and 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 the other folks hindi na siya ilustrado at this moment pero he is one of the common folks na that small change in his wardrobe that small change in his voice it's simply fascinating and now let's talk about the theme of love here. Pag-ibi. When you think about it, Noli Metangre is a book about politics, about greediness, about corruption. It's about the life of the Filipino people during the late 1800s under the Spanish occupation. But from the surface level of it, Noli Metangare is a love story. We have the love story of Ibarra and Mane Clara. We have the love story of Don Rafael and his love for San Diego. Same thing can be said with Ibarra and his love with San Diego. But when you think about it, Lahat, all this place of love in Olomitangare needs a lot of sacrifices. Dahil sa pagmamahal ni Ibarra kay Mane Clara, it led them to a ton of conflict. Family conflict, yung conflict sa kay Padre de Salvi. As if the world is trying to set them apart put them away together separate them lahat na pagmamahal ni Ibarra sa city ng San Diego especially sa kabataan it needs sacrifices a lot of people were against with the idea of building a school especially mga pare and because of that Ibarra almost got himself killed because of town dilaw and now Don Rafael Dahil sa pagmamahal niya, dahil isa siyang philanthropist, that kind of love led him to prison. At ginamit yung isang pagkakamali ni Don Rafael, ni Padre Damaso, at namatay si Don Rafael sa kulungan. Now when it comes to the Mara Clara Tibara story, Clay was the only character that was able to express love kung saan parang walang kapalit. Napansin niyo ba yun? For some reason, when it comes to love stories, ang love story ni Marni Clay pagdating sa community ng San Diego, lahat lang lumabas, lahat puro positive outcomes. Nangyari pa rin yung mga dapat mangyari 
sa Nolimitangare dito sa Mariclara at Ibarra na show na to. Nangyari pa rin yung mga yun. Ilang beses ko sinabi na walang kagagawan si, si Clyde doon kasi the ink is dry. Pero dahil din sa love ni Clyde sa San Diego, nangyari yung dinggin yung kamisin. That, that will never happen without the love of my of Clyde. Because of Clyde's love, at least we were able to see a bittersweet ending compared to the bitter ending that we have in Olimitangere. Napangit, napangiti pa rin niya si Maria Clara in a time that she's really at her lowest point in this episode. Dahil kay Clay, Elias died where he wasn't alone. Elias died nang nandun si na Fidel at Clay. Because of Clay, at least, we were able to see a bright side of Tia Isabel. Clay has been really significant in this story and when it comes to love stories, ang love story ni Clay sa San Diego mismo is the most successful one. And I love the fact that the writers were able to pull all of this thing off properly. It was executed very well. But with all of those things, eventually, babalik na tayo sa, uh, sa kanyang mundo. Nalaman na natin na yung pagkawala ni Clay is still under 24 hours. Tapos na yung mga theory na natin na pagbalik na Clay sa, ni Clay sa mundo ngayon, nasa mental hospital na si Narcisa. Wala na yung mga theory na yun. Pero wow. Is, I mean, this has been like Mara Clara is very different from Nolimi Tangere. But it's also, it, it still has the soul. And it, it's, everything is different, but everything is the same. And I'm just really glad that I was able to re-experience Nolimi Tangare through the perspective of the Clyde character. Because at least, at least, natapos ko yung Nolimi Tangare story na nakangiti ako. Because this is bittersweet. Instead of the bitterness that we have from Nolimi Tangare. But anyways, I'm excited for the next episode, you guys. Thank you for watching. And what do you guys think? Um, leave your comments down below. I'm going to reply to them. Hopefully, I use the computer got bukas. And again, thank you for watching. You guys take care. Goodbye. And God bless.